thank you, Chris. Nice job. Now we're going to have Isha Gupta present. Uh, so Isha is from Salt Lake, did medical school here, and I've, I've known Isha for a while. She's been working with Dr. Ambadi for the past year and um, doing some research. And today she's going to be talking about some research that she's done with Dr. Olson as well. So thanks, Isha. All right. Um, hi, everybody. It's nice to be here and to start off this year of ground round of presentations. Um, I'm a fourth year medical student here and I'm applying into ophthalmology. So like Brian said, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my research with Dr. Olson and all the different studies we've done and how we've tried to optimize phaco emulsification. Today in specific, I'm going to be talking about the radius um, phaco emulsification tip. Um, my outline today is I'll give a little bit of background on phaco emulsification, the problem um, and the complications that are seen in this, some questions we came up with, and then the study design we also designed, and results and conclusions. Um, a little bit of background, cataracts affect um, nearly 22 million Americans age 40 and older, and by age 80, more than half of all Americans will have cataracts. They say that if you live forever, you will have a cataract. Um, more than three million cataract surgeries are performed per year in the U.S., and that almost ends up costing us about seven billion dollars annually. Um, as you can see, um, cataracts really are the bread and butter of ophthalmology, and so they're a very important thing to look at. Um, phaco emulsification is the main method of cataract removal. This is for a variety of reasons. It's safe, it's controlled, and it's fast. Um, so therefore, you know, research in this field is actually focused mostly on improving efficiency and patient outcomes. Um, while the complications are relatively rare with this surgery, since it is so, so um, safe, some of the more common complications include inadvertent capsular breakage, um, infection of the eye, swelling of the back of the eye, corneal edema, blood in the eye, and retinal detachment. Um, today I wanted to focus a little bit more on capsular breakage. It's feared, you know, among many residents and incoming, you know, new surgeons. You know, what do you do? So capsular breakage is pretty common. I mean, it occurs in about 2 to 5 percent of surgeries. And it becomes more important when you start looking at posterior polar cataracts. And it can occur, you know, almost 25 percent of the time. Um, there's a couple qualities of capsular breakage that make it more or less prevalent in surgery. Um, the amount of pressure tip against the capsule, the amount of active vacuum at the tip, the aspiration flow rate, the gauge of the needle, the needle sharpness and degree of angulation, and the energy modu modulation. And in this study, we wanted to specifically address needle sharpness and degree of angulation. So what we looked at was a radius phaco tip. And what that means is this tip is actually has the inner and the outer edge are rounded. And this is thought to protect against capsular breakage. Um, this tip is available in uh, any gauge, bend, bevels, similar to most phaco tips. Um, and in a study of Meyer and his colleagues, he showed that there was substantial and significant decrease of capsular breakage when using this tip. Um, the study does point out that Perhaps um, in exchange for this safety profile, you are risking a decrease in efficiency and an increase in chatter. This is really important as surgeons because we all know that OR time is very valuable and as well as um, expensive. Um, so our study was actually looking at the efficiency and chatter of the phaco emulsification when using this radius tip. So as you can see here, there's a couple of pictures on the right. Um, is the traditional phaco tip. It's got a sharp inner and outer um, rim. And on the left, there's the um, smoother edge. You can see the inner and the outer edge are rounded. And this bottom is a schematic of what the tip would look like when engaging nuclear material. You can see that it's probably less likely to break through that material. So our study of the design, this has been used in a bunch of our studies looking at um, optimizing phaco emulsification. Um, we use three different ultrasound modalities, the Alcon, which is a torsional um, ultrasound, the AML White Star, which is micropulse, and the AML Ellipse, which is a transversal um, modality. We use the same powder, bottle height, vacuum, and aspiration to keep all um, parameters kind of even between them. Our lenses are porcine lens nuclei that we order, and then we soak them in a formalin 
um, a 10% formalin solution in order to mimic human cataracts. Um, I actually looked at um, two different types of lenses that would be comparable to both a three plus and a four plus human lens, cataract lens. Um, the tips, they're all from MST. We use a 0.9 millimeter diameter, which we have found to be the most efficient. Um, in previous studies, 30 degree angle bent tip, except for micropulse, which we use a straight tip, just because that's what you tend to use with that ultrasound. And then we use them with their direct counterpart with a radius cutting edge. Our study design, um, it's um, a basic design. We take the lens cube and fill it in a BSS chamber. We engage the pedal just enough to get the tip to be occluded with the nuclear fragment. And then after occlusion, we fully depress the tip in order to activate the vacuum. Um, a stopwatch is recorded for the time of removal, and we also counted the amount of chatter events, which is when the, the lens material actually removes off the end of the tip, and we have to re-engage it. Um, chatter was a uh, delay in time distinct from the total particle removal. Efficiency was measured in the amount of time required to remove the lens particle. So we have some really exciting results. These are our overall results. Um, I'm actually going to break each one of them down. So in our torsional ultrasound, as you can see, we did have we found some significant results. Um, they actually showed that with the radius tip, in both the two and three hour, or in both the three plus and four plus lenses, um, there was a decrease in efficiency, which was kind of interesting. So that being said, the radius tip didn't perform as well. In our transversal ultrasound model, um, we found no significant difference between either the two plus or three plus lenses. And in our micropulse model, we also did not find any differences in time. Um, so in words, the torsional efficiency was significantly worse with the radius tip for both the two-hour soak lenses and the three-hour soak lens cubelets. We found no significant differences in the, older, in the other ultrasound models studied, including transversal and micropulse. And just some kind of interesting facts overall, um, in the two-hour lenses, the transversal non-radius tip performs significantly better than the micropulse um, non-radius tip. And when we came into radius tips, the transversal um, tip performed significantly better than the torsional tip. Um, when we looked at chatter, we weren't able to find any differences among any of the time, hardness of the lenses, or the ultrasound model. So some conclusions that we kind of came from with this study, um, that FACO tip motion must have an impact um, with radius tips. Um, the reason being is mi micropulse is a longitudinal motion. It's kind of a jackhammering. You can you know, picture a jackhammer in your mind. It's um, straightforward motion. Um, transversal is an ellipsoidal motion where you have both horizontal and um, longitudinal motion. And then a torsional is a sub-10 arc and it's kind of a shaving motion or you can liken it to a chisel motion. Um, and since we saw that the radius time removal um, almost doubled in the transversal model, we were thinking that um, the amount of sharpness on the tip must have some sort of effect on a chisel. And if you think about it, if you have a sharper chisel, it's probably going to be more efficient, whereas the jackhammer effect can just be, you know, just that pure power um, going right at that, and you don't really need the edge sharpness. Um, finally, in conclusion, radius FACO tips are reliable and a safe option for FACO. Um, a previous study had shown that capsular breakage is dramatically reduced with this radius tip. Um, and then in this study, we were able to show that in certain ultrasound models, that being longitudinal and transversal, you, don't, you do not lose um, any efficiency or have an increase in chatter. Um, this is very important in the field. For many surgeons, this could be you know, a practical thing that they could employ right away, and you could increase safety and maintain efficiency. So that's, here are my references. And are there any questions? Dr. Mammal.
interesting to see the differences in that. Of course, you know, you did a very good talk and you didn't mention the company names, but it's very interesting that this chip is designed for, for AMO and works better right. than the AMO machine. Mm -hmm. AMO will be very happy, Altron will not be happy, <laughs> but um, it's interesting to see if this will play out practically. To see, um, you know, I think we need to start looking at these chips for both types of machines in a real world setting to see if there really is a difference in terms of loss of efficacy when you're using it with the, the AMO type of, of machine as opposed to the Altron type machine. Okay. Um, when you uh, talk to these huge Brian? Well, I was just going to ask if the question there went to the other side right here. I thought about just trying to do a study at the VA where a lot of the cases were done by red ink compared to the blue chip and see if there's any difference. But it seems like you'd have to have some numbers that I don't think you said you really got to show the difference. So I know that was just something that you thought on. You know, studies like this are important because they're controlled and they can back big doses. Thank you. 